Grand Rising family, I want to welcome you to another episode of Max Crypto News, where we talk about these intangible coins at all times. Listen, family, flow is really taking off, y'all. Family, we're going to talk a little bit more about flow, um, how you can get this residual income on a daily basis. We're going to talk about um, Neom that's about to have his hard fork coming up. Um, Cardano just had a hard fork and much more on this episode of Max Crypto News. Listen, family, if you're not subscribed to BitMax on YouTube, what you waiting on? What are you doing? If you're not subscribed to BitMax on YouTube, what are you waiting for? Family, I need you to go to BitMax. When you go on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe Hit that notification bell, family. Leave a comment, right? Like the video if you actually like the content, right? Because, listen, the page is growing and the information is going to keep coming because we're in the midst of a real good bull market, family. Also, listen, I'm still offering that advanced crypto class. Um, I've been offering it for over a month right now. You can email me at bmac252.sf at gmail.com or you can email me at maxcryptonews at gmail.com family this is the time to get in you don't want to wait see our problem is we like to jump on stuff when it's going up but people see the price of bitcoin rising and rising and rising they want to jump in now that they see bitcoin consolidating they don't want to jump in because it looks like it's losing steam this is when you want to get in. The art of investing is investing when stuff is cheaper, not why it's going up. You invest while things is going down. So when it go up, you will get a profit. You don't invest while it's going up because then you can have risk the opportunity of it crashing and coming down. Then you are in a loss because you buying it while it's going up. You want to buy it when it's down, family. This is when you really want to join the class. But with that being said, that's up to you. That's a choice that you can make, right? But family, listen, bank roll is the truth. Right now, family, I'm gaining off of flow. I'm getting an extra $150 a month right now. Now, I've been doing flow for about a week. It's been about a week since I joined it. Right now, all flow. I'm getting six Banker X a day in interest. Six Banker X a day. Now, six Banker X is like a dollar. One Banker X is basically um, a dollar. Because right now, it's, a, um, it's $2.24 right now. That's how much USD I got for this right now. So it's a little bit under a dollar. So six of them. I'm rounding it off that I'm getting $5 for six bank of a day, right? And five times 30 is $150. So I'm getting an extra $150 a month so far, just off flow. And I've been doing this for about a month, family. So this is an extra $150 residual income, a month that I'm getting off something that I just started um, about a week and a half ago. Now, I posted a video yesterday to go into debt and into detail about how you can actually get set up and start getting this residual income, right? Also, with Stronghold, with Stronghold, now I'm getting 100 TRX a day. Every day since yesterday, today gonna be my first day. Now I'm getting a hundred of these a day in interest. A day, y'all. I have a thousand stronghold, 10% of a thousand is a hundred. So I'm getting a hundred of these. My, you see what my APR is 193. It went down, it was more yesterday. But so it's going to change how much I get today, though. But I was getting up to 100 of these a day. Right now, it ain't going to be 100 because it's 198. 
Um, I would have to do the math, but it's close to 100. It's still good. A free TRX, I'm getting a day just by storing Stronghold up here. So actually, 100 TRX is like a, another dollar. You can say that's a dollar. I'm, I'm going to round it off at a dollar. So actually, yeah, it's about six or seven dollars a day. I'm getting interest, but I say one hundred fifty dollars just to, one hundred fifty dollars a month so far. It's actually a little bit more. Um, also, and I have a video on this film. I'm showing y'all this because like, there's no reason not to sit here and do this. Now, Stack also, I joined Stack, right? So, with Stack, I'm getting an extra. I'm not at one whole banker X a day yet. That's how much I'm going to be, but I'm going to get this up. So I'm getting probably five or I mean, at least, I don't know. I'm going to slowly work it. Because what I'm doing is I'm taking my, and this is a strategy that you can do, right? You can do the strategy yourself. I'm taking my flow in the morning. I'm rolling. So whatever I'm getting, I'm going to roll it into this. At night, I'm claiming. And whatever I claim, I'm going to turn it into stacks, which is Banker X. It's the same thing. I'm going to convert it into stack, and I'm going to add it into here. And it's going to grow my stack, and it's also going to grow the amount of Banker X that I'm going to get paid daily from stack. So basically, I'm going to use the interest that I'm getting from um, flow for half of it. And I'm going to put this into stack. And this is going to help me get more bank X, so I'm not spending no more money. Now, with the 100 TRX that I'm getting from Stronghold a day, I can convert that into Banker X if I want to. But what I'm thinking I may do with my stronghold or the TRX is I might just let that accumulate and then sell it in, and sell it for Ether and then start accumulating my Ethereum off my stronghold. So whatever I get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna transfer that to Ethereum. So I just begin some free Ethereum. All right, so that's our bank roll, y'all. Um, but let me get into some news, family. Let's get into because we got a lot of news to talk about today. So um let me see. Let's go to the chart. Let's go to coin market cap. A lot of stuff going on in the news today, family, and the cryptocurrency world. Right. So I just wanted to get that um bank roll over with, um, flow over with. Um, that's something y'all can look into. Hey, get that free money, family. All right, so let me refresh my screen. All right, the total market cap is three nine hundred and thirty-five billion dollars. Bitcoin at thirty-four thousand four hundred forty-eight dollars and twelve cent. You got Ethereum at one thousand and fifty-two dollars and ninety-five cent. So, um, Bitcoin is. We're gonna look at Bitcoin chart. Um, you got XRP at twenty-nine cent, close to thirty cent. Litecoin at one hundred thirty-seven dollars. Cardano at 29 cents, almost 30 cents. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and talk about the news with Cardano, right? Cardano, Mary Hard, Mary Hall Fork to offer native multi-asset support in February. So Cardano has a program coming out in February of this year. And it's gonna allow Cardano, um, so it can offer multi-asset support. So multiple coins can be up there and it's gonna offer support, right? Um, it says, Hoss, Hoss, Hoskinson revealed that the Mary Hall fork is coming in February with the same promising to deliver native multi-asset support through the Cardano network. Now, something that's interesting is Cardano has become the most state coin out of all the coins. Yeah, Cardano has surpassed, which one was it? Um, 
polka dot. So here go. This is what it says. Like so, Cardano is about to take off. Hope y'all got y'all ADA and y'all bang, y'all. But hope, hope that's part of your bag is ADA, right? But in fact, according to data from Staking Rewards, Cardano recently overtook Polkadot to become the most decentralized network with over 69.53% of its circulating supply now staked. There are also some reports of over 100 million ADA staked per day with an average of 1,500 new delegators to the network each day. Now, all my Cardano is state, so I um I have to agree with them, right? Because all my Cardano is state. But let me I ain't want to I don't want to go here. All my Cardano is state, so I kind of I believe most of the people I know who got Cardano uh, stuff is state. But look, it says for the eighth day in a row, more than three thousand new wallets were created. Ninth day in a row, more than 1,000 wallets delegated. So these people are really buying Cardano and staking. Because this new network that's coming um, in February is going to make Cardano. Um, so all the smart contracts, all them developers on Ethereum are going to be able to develop on ADA. So it's going to be very interesting. Cardano has some good um information and some hard forks and it's looking good for Cardano, especially with these upcoming months right so um Cardano looking real good y'all especially with the price at 28 cents like that's a straight up steal right now um bitcoin cash at 474 dollars 52 cent hey y'all I know I always call Bitcoin Cash tr Bitcoin trash, but um, you might want to get you some Bitcoin Cash, family. If you can't get you a whole one, at least get you a half one. The reason why I tell you this is because before the market crashed, and well, before Bitcoin started consolidating, Bitcoin Cash had got close to seven hundred dollars. So just just remember, I'm gonna show y'all. Just remember. A couple of days ago, Bitcoin Cash had took off. It was about to move. Bitcoin Cash was about to move. But we had this correction. But Bitcoin Cash was about to move. It had got up to. Where were you at? Where were you at? Let's get here. They don't want to show it here. I'm gonna take you somewhere where we can see it for sure. Um, ECH. Where you at? But it had got it had started moving, y'all. Oh, that's against the Bitcoin. I don't want to show you. I just want y'all to see, listen, because it because the all time high for um all time high for um Bitcoin Cash, whether y'all know it or not, is um over four thousand dollars. So yeah, it was six thirty one here. On cracking, right? But it was higher on other other platforms. It was higher, yeah. It was at least over six fifty. So, um, I'm just telling you, telling you what I know, family. Um, might wanna, <laughs> you might wanna look into some Bitcoin Cash now, man, because it was over, it was two hundred dollars higher than this. Matter of fact, it may show it if I go to the last seven days. Yeah, let me show, uh, show more. See, yeah, uh, hold on, wait, 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 seven day high. Oh, okay, 
Well, PSA 7, they have a 629. What I showed was more, but that's up here. It was more, though. Just know Bitcoin Cash was taking off. That's all I want y'all to know. It was taking off, and you see the all-time highs of over $3,000. And it has started moving. So um, you might want to get you at least a half of one or a whole one. If you, if you pay $400 now, $500 now, and they go up to, let's say go up to $2,000. Is it worth it? Let's say if we go to 3,000, if it's worth it. If it go over its all time high, you may be looking at $5,000. That's a 10 time return, 10X return, family. It's something to think about. Or let's say you only put get half, spend 250, and it go up to $5,000. You still turn it at 250, that um, 250. 10 times. That's something to throw out there, y'all. Um, but this ain't financial advice. This is just commentary. And um, that's all it is, right? So uh, let's keep going. Um, I'm going to come back to the charts. Let's get some of this news. There's a lot of news going on, right? So um, where I want to start with Coinbase. <laughs> All you Coinbase love, listen, Coinbase apologized to UK and EU customers hit by regulatory lockout. So any of the Coinbase users that's in the UK and not in America, they have been having problems lately on the site. And I've been seeing it because I'm in some crypto groups and I'm seeing that they can't do anything. Well, this explains why Coinbase issued a rare apology Tuesday to UK and EU customers who the major cryptocurrency exchange said in a blog post have been affected by weeks of systems outage and trading restrictions. This is why Coinbase blamed the problems on months of heavy customer trading activity from platform newcomers and returning accounts. Evolving regulatory requirements also led to Coinbase placing temporarily restrictions on accounts from which it needed to collect more information. Um, Coinbase and the Post refused to give ground on its regulatory obligations, but said it can do better, can do a better job of communicating those burdens to customers. The company said it is streamlining its information collection procedures to help solve regulatory lockouts, but Coinbase did not address nor apologize for its global troubles in keeping all operations running smoothly through heavy trading days. Our own family, this is why for the family in the UK and EU, this is why y'all been having problems with Coinbase. They finally decided to come out and tell y'all the timing is great, ain't it? <laughs> when Bitcoin is consolidating, they give you an excuse after people that made money. And this is, and listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just a realist. And this right here is part of the reason why I don't deal with Coinbase like that. Just know that. But the timing of this is when they're coming out to let people know. The market is in a correction. Now, I want y'all to see that where this article at. Um, right here. Top 100 Bitcoin addresses accumulated 11 billion more BTC in the past 30 days. Interesting, ain't it? Now, I want to know how much have they accumulated since the dip? Because a lot of shaky people sold. And, and the ones that couldn't sell and make profit, you know, they have a hierarchy in some of these, um, on some of these exchanges when they go dark and regular people can't sell, but people at the top can sell. And when it fall and they can buy, but you can't, it's interesting. Let's, but let's hear this. Let's hear this, family. 
top 100 Bitcoin addresses accumulated $11 billion more BTC in the past 30 days. The top 100 richest Bitcoin addresses are increasingly bullish, accumulating 16% more Bitcoin over the last 30 days. In total these addresses added 334,000 more Bitcoin to their bags, or around $11 billion worth. The majority barely reacted to Bitcoin's recent price drop from $41,000 to below $33,000. Only 7 addresses conducted a transfer out of the wallet since the most recent all-time high on January 10th. Of the addresses that have transacted in the last 30 days, only 8 of them have more than 10 transactions to their name since December 12th. Perhaps surprisingly, many of the largest addresses are yet to see a bull run, with 8 of the top 10 having received their first transaction later than September 2018. The newest in the top 100 is only 2 months old. They're not all individual whales however. The addresses include at least 10 controlled by exchanges such as Hobi, Binance, Bitrex, and Kraken. The rest are believed to belong to a mix of institutional investors and wealthy hodlers, with it being almost impossible to differentiate between two. What is clear though, is that the big guys are not easily influenced by price or sentiment. In order to make it into the top echelon of Bitcoin addresses, one must hold more than $336 million in BTC. Around $2.2 billion is required to hit the top 10. Addresses within this prestigious list have often attracted attention for various reasons, including one that is believed to belong to Satoshi Nakamoto himself. The third wealthiest address, with an untouched 94,506 BTC, created headlines back in September 2019 after Glassnode reported that 73,000 of the BTC in the wallet had been transferred from Hobi. It was presumed to be the richest non-exchange address. According to Bitinfo charts, 64 of the top 100 have never seen a single Satoshi transferred out. These addresses, which currently control more than 2.5 million BTC, 13.5% of circulating supply, with a value of almost $85 billion, include 15 dormant addresses. 11 are more than 9 years old. Although no one can prove that the 300,000 BTC held by these addresses have been lost, most assume so. Whoa. Top 100 addresses, they've been buying. Well, just know that people are buying this Bitcoin. They are buying it, they are buying it, they are buying it, they are buying it. And you don't want to be the one that sells, sells, sell. You want to hold on to whatever Bitcoin you got or try to accumulate as much of a Bitcoin as you can. That is the ultimate goal, family, right? So I just wanted to let y'all see that Coinbase is apologizing. And then you find out that the top addresses or accumulate as much Bitcoin as they possibly can while people are sitting here selling away because the price going up and down. They trying to accumulate because they understand the long-term longevity of Bitcoin family. Right. Also, since I have y'all here, what I want to talk about. Mm. Neom. Nim is about to have a snapshot family. And Nim snapshot is coming up. They're going to come out with a new, um, they, in February 2021, Nim is launching the symbol public blockchain. And what they're going to do is for every one XCM you have, you will get one XYM, which is symbol. Right, and if you own any of the XCM, you need to come to this website and click and set up to get the snapshot. Um, if I remember correctly, I thought the snapshot was the 14th, which is tomorrow, but I've been looking and I, I haven't been able to find the actual date. So I think they might've pushed the date back because I can't find the date of the snapshot no more. You know, it used to let you know what day it was gonna be snapshot, but it don't say no more what's the actual date that it's gonna do the snapshot. But if you wanna get some of the free symbol, you wanna to come to them and go through the process. You gotta download symbol to your um, computer or either your uh, phone. And then they got this process and steps that you do to actually um, they show you everything, how to do it right here. Show you how to download it and what to do when you download it if you wanna opt in. Um, but that's teachers' own right. Also, family, 
The U.S. Navy has awarded one, a 1.5 million jet fighter contract to blockchain project. So let's hear this out. Let's let's see what's going on with this, y'all. U.S. Navy awards 1.5 million dollars jet fighter contract to blockchain project. SimbaChain, a cloud-based smart contract platform has been tasked with revamping the supply chain of the United States military after it received a $1.5 million grant from the U.S. Office of Navy Research. The project will be responsible for developing a blockchain-based solution to enable demand sensing for critical military weaponry parts. Demand sensing is a forecasting technique used in supply chain logistics that processes information in real time to accurately predict demand ahead of time. Work will reportedly focus on constructing a use case centered on the Boeing F-A-18 Hornet, a combat jet which had its first variant introduced in the 1980s, and which still forms the backbone of the U.S. Navy today. Simba Chain commenced work on January 6 at a naval air station in Jacksonville, Florida, where it will work in tandem with the Naval Enterprise Sustainment Technology Team, NES. Project lead for NES, Steve McKee, said the Navy's Small Business Innovation Research, SBIR program was allocated $30 million in 2020 to develop technological innovations that improve military readiness. In 2020, the Department of the Navy's SPUR program allocated over $30 million to help advance innovations to improve readiness. This blockchain project with SimbaChain exemplifies the role of technology in revitalizing not just our military facilities, but our systems as well. Pilot projects like this one with the Fleet Readiness Center in Jacksonville drive both innovation and ultimately positive outcomes. SimbaChain CEO Joel Nidig said blockchain was up to the task of forming the backbone of an effective military supply chain, thanks to the irreversibility of transactions, its tamper-proof nature and its ability to be accurately audited. Blockchain is well suited to solve complex supply chain pain points as it enables a decentralized mechanism for the recording of non-reputable transactions, making data both immutable and auditable, and lastly, tamper-proof once written, said Nidig. SimbaChain was developed by Indiana Technology and Manufacturing Companies and the University of Notre Dame in 2017, as a result of a research grant awarded by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. Since then, the project has delivered multiple contracts for DARPA, the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Department of Defense. In October 2020, SimbaChain won first prize in a war game scenario hosted by the U.S. Department of Defense. Simba took home $100,000 for its implementation of a secure, blockchain-based communications network, beating out competitors from Boeing in the process. That's interesting. Um, that's interesting. It's a start. Um, once they start using it to let them know about um, parts and stuff that they need, what is it, what is it going to go into, right? So all this stuff is showing the growth of cryptocurrency and how it's expanding its reach and the blockchain is being used everywhere. Um, let's look at the Bitcoin chart real fast. That's how I popped it up. Might as well just look at it. All right, family. So, you know, yesterday I said that we, Bitcoin needed to get back over the 35,000 and in between 35 and this 37, and we didn't never got there. Um, so um, we actually got a bearish cross here, and we haven't got over this bearish cross. This is the one hour chart, family. So um, now we didn't make a lower low. That's the only good thing. Well. Uh, technically, you can say this right here. Technically, you can. Oh, where am I here? Um, technically, you can say where well, it's really it's not a lower low, but it tests it tests this low here. So um, family, we're in a critical point that we cannot go below this because then we will be making another lower low. After we made these lower lows around here, we came down, then we got here, we started moving. And, there was, and after that, 
you know, you see, we didn't make a lower low because we didn't go under here, right? But we came, went up, and then we came back and touched this again. Actually, it looked like we went lower than that. And if we do, it's 31K, 31,000 is going to be in play, family. If, if we come under here, it's 31, 31K going to be in play. That's all I'm going to tell you. 31,000 will be in play and followed by this. And you could put, you know, this as an area of support. But we need this correction. So I'm not really worried about the correction. Um, it needs to correct. Um, this is healthy for the market. Um, so don't be all alarm, alarmed. This is healthy um, for the market to correct and pull back. We had to get under the RSI. We back under this RSI. Um, today is Wednesday. It might it might do a reversal and pump today. Um, usually Wednesdays it it take off so so Wednesdays. But oh no, we'll see. Um, you know, but it's consolidating, and you know it's still at thirty four thousand dollars. That's still great, even if you get down to thirty one, or a little bit. Like, let's say if we get down to 29,000, that's still great, y'all. Like, so, you know, it's consolidating, let it consolidate. Um, it's going to take back off, though. You know, that's the good thing about the consolidating. It's going to take back off. Right. So, um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I'm going to um, play this video. Uh, you have a theory, a thesis, that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency can be used to close the wealth gaps with under in underrepresented communities. Explain to us uh, how this can happen. Certainly. So for the first time in history, we have a uh, plan B option to the current financial system, which has seen years of redlining, racial discrimination, and other egregious acts by retail banks to the black community. And in my opinion, the black community has the opportunity to shift our mindset and our money uh, because money is nothing but monetary energy. We can shift our energy into uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because there is no barrier to entry. Uh, it is unconfiscatable, uh, which is something we have not seen in the history uh, of, of the United States for the black community. So I think Bitcoin is a great step in the right direction and I think it can definitely help long-term. Uh, I want to talk to you more about the issue of digital redlining. But before we get to that, I have to ask you about the volatility. You know, I start off this segment talking about the big drop in, in Bitcoin earlier this week. You know, you have people like Mark Cuban saying there's there's a bubble. You have Jeffrey Gunlock, um, you know, raising red flags about the valuations right now. How concerned are you that this might not be the right time for people to be moving their money into Bitcoin or just the fact that it's, in, it's incredibly volatile? Well, if you're worried about the price, you don't really understand what Bitcoin is for, uh, because on a low time preference, uh, actually, Bitcoin has only not been profitable if you bought it five days out of a 12 year history. Uh, it's 99.9% .9 of the days that you have entered Bitcoin, you would be in profit. And the drop that we've seen recently is nothing more than market cycles. You see dips along the way. There were over six 20 to 30 percent dips on the way up to 19,000 back in 2017. And what we're seeing now is par for the course. We saw the price increase dramatically. It does uh, change over time. But uh, if you have a, a low time preference, if you're in Bitcoin as a savings account, as a way to preserve your wealth, then this volatility should not scare you at all. And for anybody who it does scare, uh, you need to reevaluate why you're into Bitcoin. It's more than an investment, more than something that you can trade. So this volatility doesn't scare me at all. Should not scare anybody. Continue the dollar cost average over time and forget the price and you'll be fine because this is a scarce asset. Um, there is no reason for you to be scared out of purchasing it. Um, there's only a certain amount available. And the fact that black people have the opportunity to do that now, we should take hold and do it um, simply because there is no other options uh, outside of this financial system to preserve our wealth uh, other than Bitcoin. Shepard Smith here. 
glad to hear that. Um, you know, I've been saying this for um, <laughs> I've been saying the same thing since 2013 that this gives us the opportunity in the black community to get rid of a lot of the redlining and stuff that's been going on with the banks and the discrimination in the financial sector. Because with cryptocurrency, it don't matter what your race is. It's about the assets. And that's what it should be about, the assets and the products, not about your race. But I've been saying this for a long time. So it's good to hear somebody um, you know, actually saying the same thing. And I think on a bigger stage than me, right? So that's a great thing. Um, let me um close that. Um, family, listen, I'm still staking my hex. I'm into the hex. Matter of fact, let's 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 see the price of hex real fast. Let me let me see what hex is going for right now. Last time I checked it was a penny. Yeah, it's still at a penny. Um, down a little bit, but that's okay. But yeah, family, I'm staking my hex. Got me some contracts, and I'm and I got this hex being staked. I didn't stake a lot because I I tippy toe into everything. I ain't about to go all in, but um, so far it's looking good. One of them, I'm thirty percent of my progress, so um, I get a payout. I forgot how many more days. I don't know. One of them was 30 days. Okay. It's day four, eight. And 21 days. I got 21 more days. And I get a payout for this one. My, and then yeah, the other one was for 45. The other one I say for 45 days. Yeah, that's what's up though. Um, but yeah, um, X is um a new coin, man, but it, the, the new thing is keeping everything state and keep it from being traded on the open market because usually that um draws value to it, right? So um that's that. Now this is an interesting article um that I saw a little bit earlier. Um that OCC Brian Brooks thinks that DeFi can root out bias and fraud in traditional banks. This is interesting because I'm going to play it though. Gonna... OCC's Brian Brooks thinks that DeFi can root out bias and fraud in traditional banking. In an opinion piece published in the Financial Times on Tuesday, acting comptroller of the currency Brian Brooks put forward the need to reconfigure banking regulations for an age of algorithms. Brooks, who currently leads the Treasury's Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, compared existing banking regulations to traffic laws. He further used the analogy of self-driving cars for new steps in decentralized finance. Just as the original rules of the road protected us from other drivers, so our current bank regulations exist mainly to prevent human failings, wrote Brooks. The overall tone of Brooks' letter is confident that banking regulators are capable of retooling, of learning how to appraise algorithms for bias and fraud, which he says will ultimately prove simpler than trying to root those same issues out of human bankers. Brooks concludes. Could we usher in a future where we eliminate error, stop discrimination, and achieve universal access for all? Optimists like me think so. How different would banking in the U.S. be today if regulators, bankers, and policymakers were as bold as car makers 10 years ago? The OCC charters and directs national banks. Formerly the leader of Coinbase's legal team, Brooks has been a major proponent of integrating crypto technology into the national payments system. Under his watch, the OCC recently authorized national banks to run stablecoin payments and nodes. Brooks has similarly been a proponent of a national charter for non-depository institutions, specifically aimed at giving fintech firms a chance at national licensing rather than having to go through each state in the U.S. near the end of December. However, state regulators struck back with a lawsuit deriding what they call the OCC's non-bank charter as an overreach of federal power. In today's opinion piece, Brooks may have been referring to these issues with state regulators when he wrote that. There is also a risk that, in the absence of federal regulatory clarity, U.S. states rush to fill the void and create a patchwork of inconsistent rules that impede the orderly development of a national market. While President Trump nominated Brooks to be the full comptroller back in November, the Senate never moved forward on his nomination. With the new administration taking over next week, 
Brooks's continued tenure at the OCC seems dependent upon a Biden nomination. Oh, okay. Well, um, so this is um, interesting. And it's kind of similar to what um, I was just saying and the brother was just saying in that article that just was played that um, DeFi can read out the bias in the fraud and traditional banking if applied right. And they also mentioned that how the OCC is building crypto America and saving banks from extinction. Extinction, because um, he talked about how they said that banks can um, offer the nods and have their stable coins. Like this is saving the banks, and that. And if you've been enrolled in my class, I told y'all back in December what this was going to do to banks, and I told y'all what exactly was going to happen, and it's happening. You know, I told y'all in December in the class, the, those in the class about the banks and what these stable coins is going to do to banks and how it's going to convert them into um, crypto banks in essence or crypto exchanges. And right, and this is happening. We are seeing it start to happen now. And I told y'all back in December that this stuff was going to happen. And now we're starting to see it, right? So. It's, they have no other choice. Either they're going to get down or they're going to lay down, one or the other. And banks are too powerful and have too much money for them not to find a way to get involved. But, you know, they, the thing is, they're going to get involved, family, but we just need to be ahead of the game, right? So um, let me get back to this market. What else? Um, also, you know what? I forgot, y'all. Um. GSX, man. If y'all want to get this GSX going, um, y'all come to the website. And, you know, this growth point is a game changer. I've been telling y'all this thing is a game changer. Y'all, um, now, I see that it's quite many people that have actually came here and signed up, but they, they just haven't brought a coin yet um but hey y'all this is a um it's a game changer you know especially with this roadmap in front of us and how they plan on doing it and then i love the fact that you know that it, you get yearly bonuses that's like dividends from coca-cola stocks you know certain stocks you get you get paid yearly i mean Quarterly dividends, depending on the stock, if they pay in the quarterly or yearly. Uh, I think Coca-Cola paid quarterly. But with this, you're going to begin yearly dividends. That's very important. Begin a yearly dividend off your core. But other assets do it in the crypto world too, right? It's backed by the assets, trust ownership. They're going to burn the coin. Family, I know y'all have seen this enough. Hey, the link will be in the description if you want to get signed up and get you some of this rope, this GSX coin. Um, let me see. What's this about? Okay, I thought about that. And with that being said, family, I thank y'all for watching this episode of Max Crypto News. Hey, um, I look forward to seeing y'all on the next episode. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, hit that like button. Hit that um, notification bell so you can get notified when we drop these videos. And if you want to join the class, you know how to find me, email me. Peace.